Hi guys, it's ASBYT and this is the brand new 2020 budget console offering from Microsoft, the Xbox Series S. This generation, Microsoft decided to split the launch into two, offering the more affordable Series S for £249 and the more expensive premium model that I've got here, the Series X, for £449. I'll leave a link to that review in the video description below, just below the sub button. Don't wink! <laughs> I applaud Microsoft for offering two different options, and there's a lot to love here, with some features that may even be better than the Series X for certain people. But I also think it's got a few potentially glaring issues, which we'll get to, that make it a very hard console to recommend to everyone. But first, let's take a full in-depth 360 of the console and see what you get for £249. 360, Xbox 360... Come on, that's a good one. Very quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, a sub would be awesome. And if this video and my Series X video both get 10,000 likes each, I will be giving away a brand new Xbox. So you know what to do. First off, it's a lot smaller than the Series X. And this may be a big plus for some of you that have limited space in your setup. You can simply whack it in a bag and it's far less cumbersome. Microsoft claim it's the most compact Xbox ever. Whether you care about that or not is another matter. I mean, it really is Diddy. It's like a toy. Personally, I prefer the matte black look of the Series X, but if you have a bright or all-white setup, for example, this might actually look better. I personally would have probably kept the circle, which is your heat exhaust, white as well, but that's just me. Like the Series X, you can stand it upright or flat, whichever suits, and you've also got the same logo power button, and you've also got similar ports as well. So your Ethernet, two USB Type-A ports, HDMI, storage expansion, and power port as well. You have another USB type A port for your controller on the front and a sync button if you want to go wireless. And speaking of controller, as I said in the Series X review, it's very, very similar, almost identical to the old gen version. So something you're probably really familiar with. This may be a good or bad thing for you personally. You may have wanted to see a brand new change to the controller. Equally, you may have loved the old one, as a lot of you said you did in my Series X video, stating that it was a popular design, so why bother to change it? There are very slight incremental improvements to it. There's a slight texture now on the triggers, etc., and they've kind of been rounded slightly and made slightly smaller, making the controller as a whole feel slightly less cumbersome to make it feel more comfortable in the hand. You also have the new D-pad design and the new share button, which allows you to capture screenshots and video clips really easy, which is a nice touch. On the whole, as I said, pretty much the same in terms of look and feel here headphone jack on the bottom, Type-C port and sync button on the top, and it also takes AA batteries to charge. This will split a lot of you as some of you would prefer not to faff around with changing and buying new batteries for example, but equally if you want that instant charge you can get it and you don't have to wait for the charging of your controller and you could buy uh, you know rechargeable batteries and keep sort of them charged in the background so that you can just whack them in when you need them. Personally, I would have liked to have seen Microsoft include a rechargeable setup when it came to batteries within the retail box so that you don't have to go out and buy them yourselves with the price of the consoles. But overall, I really quite like the controllers. Now there is one glaring thing you will notice that is different with the S from the X, and that is the fact that there is no disk drive slot, as the S is a digital console only, meaning all games will have to be fully downloaded online. This may be a negative for those of you who prefer having an actual disk, but for some, you won't really care. It also means you can't, of course, use it to watch disc movies and use it as a Blu-ray player. Although like the Series X, you do have access to all the on-demand services like Netflix, Apple TV, and Amazon Prime, to name a few. This physical difference does potentially throw up another pretty huge glaring issue subjectively, depending on who you are. But before we get to that, let's deep dive, see the brand new features, and go over all of the things that are the same as the Series X and the other objective drawbacks of choosing the S over the X, and whether the £200 you do save is worth it for the limitations that come with it, starting with the internal specs. Both consoles are equipped with an 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU, but the S has a lower clock speed at 3.6 GHz to the 3.8 GHz on the X, meaning in theory the X can retrieve and interpret instructions slightly quicker. Again, both are equipped with an AMD RDNA 2 GPU, but the X is a fair bit more powerful at 12 teraflops to the 4 on the S. 
This means that games can render 4K resolution up to 120 frames per second, to the 1440p up to 120 frames per second on the S. With the lower 10GB of RAM to the 16 on the X, it basically means in layman's terms, the S will be able to handle high frame rates of titles that require it for an optimum experience, but the image won't be quite as sharp or detailed. And this is subjectively important. If you crave the best possible image emanating from your games, then you simply aren't going to get that with the S. You've also got to consider that these points might not be hugely important for you right now, but in six months time, a year, two years, they might be. And you've got to remember that the cycles of consoles tends to be five, six, seven years. So in terms of future proofing, you may want to look at the more expensive model. Now, game load times are much quicker than what we saw on the Xbox One, and this is something you will notice straight away. As stated, the Series S is capable of up to 120 frames per second for that ultra smooth gameplay. The higher the frame rate, the more frames that are flashing past your eyeballs in a second. So especially fast paced action, first person shooter and sports games will feel much smoother and far more immersive. And while you won't see a massive difference playing the old games on the new console, there is definitely a nice tweaked upgrade in visuals, providing of course the game that you're playing is capable of it and you have the appropriate equipment to run alongside your console to get the most out of that output. Now one huge feature is quick resume where you can actually enter back into a suspended game and puts you straight back into the action as if you never left. You can also jump between suspended games again with next to no loading and I think a lot of you will enjoy this. The Series S, like the X, is backwards compatible. Both use HDMI 2.1 display out and both have the same software and dashboard etc. Like with the controller, this may disappoint some of you that were hoping for a massive overhaul, but for those who like familiarity, then this will feel all warm and homely. Remember, Microsoft updated the dashboard on the Xbox One in August, so they would argue there's no real need to do it again. You've got the same tiles which you can customise, choosing which games etc you want, in which order, and which apps you want to see on your home screen. It's nothing too sensational, but it works absolutely fine, and you can now use dynamic backgrounds to create a more personalised home screen. But and this might potentially be a stinker for the Series S here, you only have internal storage up to 512 gigabytes, which is basically half of the Series X and there's no disk drive. So everything is digital only. So if you only plan on buying one, maybe two or three games, then the digital console might be a decent option for you because you get a reduced price, for example. But if you're a greedy glut when it comes to gaming titles and you want all of the juicy, pretty sure I just said gaming glut. What's a gaming glut? <laughs> Basically, if you want to download lots of games, some gaming titles can be up to uh, and more than 100 gigabytes. So that storage is going to fill up pretty quickly. And yes, it does have expandable storage. You can add your own. But by the time you've bought an expansion card, you're pretty much going to be paying overall the same price as just buying a Series X in the first place. And therefore, it's a bit of a confusing move from Microsoft, in my opinion. Quite a big Achilles heel to launch the, the console with. If your max budget is around £250, which it will be for a lot of people, the Series S is a great way to launch into the next gen world. It makes a brilliant, affordable, expensive present, if that makes any sense. And it's great for limited space setups and those of you that want to go traveling and want to take a console with you, hopefully when we can travel again in the future. But being digital only and having that limited storage makes it quite hard to recommend when the Series X is only £200 more. For most people, remember, this will be a long term investment. So £200 over the space of five, six, seven years between now and the next console, that price may not seem that much for the advantages that you get. Now, there are some huge titles available on launch for the Series S and in 2021, Halo Infinite and Lord of the Rings Gollum. Let me know in the comments, are you going to go with the Series S or the Series X, or are you going to go with the dreaded Sony PlayStation 5? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like and share if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you love everything tech, breaking tech news, unboxings, reviews. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace out. Do just what you want.